Okay, so I want to show you guys a game that I've really enjoyed lately that scratches an itch somewhere between Oxygen Not Included and SimCity 2000. This is Timberborn. It's basically a colony survival sim with beavers. The lore is pretty simple. Mankind lost to nature. They are gone, and now it's beavers' turn, so there are ruins of human buildings around the map, but beyond that, it's just you versus nature. A brief coverage of how this game works. You start out the game with your town hall and some beavers. You've got to fulfill their needs to keep them alive. Things like running over and building a water pump to get water from the nearby water source, planting crops in order to grow food, or just picking berries off nearby bushes, things like that. You know, you've got to meet their basic needs. Beyond that, then you need to get building materials. So that's going to mean chopping down trees. However, you can run out of trees. Now, if you leave a few trees, more will grow naturally until there's just like whole forests. But once you eventually tech up to the forester building, you can plant large areas full of trees, and then you can just have like a, a lot of lumber coming in all the time. Beyond that, you'll start getting science points by making inventors that will, you know, chug away and work on getting you science points, and you can spend those points to unlock new buildings that you do not have unlocked yet in order to get more things that you need. Eventually, you will be able to get electricity by having water wheels in the water or having power wheels that they can run in, just like a gerbil, and then, you know, you can connect them. Now, the power is, they call it timber punk, but it's basically, you know, road rotating shafts that move between the buildings. Like it's not actual like electricity in, you know, in the conventional form. Eventually you can make batteries. Uh, they have these things called gravity batteries that you can use. There is also two factions. At the time of recording this, the early access has two factions. There is the folktales, which are about living in harmony with the land. And there's the iron teeth. And they're just like, you know, business, business, business. And they are, they are willing to burn down the forest if it means, you know, getting more fuel. But they work harder. So there's pros and cons to both sides. Like, for example, the folktales, if you just make them buildings where they can live and sleep in, they will make babies until they have filled all of those buildings over time. It, it, it you know, if you if you lose some, they will slowly repopulate naturally. Whereas the iron teeth, uh, they use breeding pods. They just throw some, I mean, they, they can't be bothered to get busy because they got to get busy. All right, so they, they just throw some stuff into the breeding pods and uh, a few months later, babies come out and they're ready to work. Like, they, the, the children crave the mines with the iron teeth. So they're they're a little futuristic. The buildings between the two factions are very different. Now, that's a brief summary of the factions. They have different strengths and weaknesses. What is your enemy? In SimCity 2000, for example, which was something I compared this to earlier, you had natural disasters, things like fires and earthquakes and stuff like that. In this game, at the time of recording this, there's two major enemies. One is called Drought, which is the oldest enemy, and then they recently added one called Badwater, or Bad Tide. Now, Drought, I'm in the middle of one in the gameplay that you see on the screen right now. And generally, water comes into the map from here and from over here. Now, this is a map. There are many maps. And the water will then, you know, fill up certain areas and it will circulate until it eventually hits an edge of the map, such as over here, and then it runs off the map. Now, in a drought, no new water is coming onto the map. Now, you'll notice I have built dams because, you know, beavers, that is holding this water and not letting it escape. And I am also have a lot of it in storage. Now, you know, as long as the water's here, these croplands are green and they're growing, they're growing new food and stuff like that. This area over here does not have any water near it. So all the trees here died. So if this water dries up, all our, all our crops die a few days later. And if we eventually run out of water and food, you know, basically it starts kind of ticking down. Their hunger and thirst reach critical levels and they start dying. And there's a little uh, record behind me of like, you know, new beavers being born, some dying of old age, and then some dying from, you know, thirst or starving, things like that. So the main defense against drought is just planting a base to store as much water as possible. And there is terraforming. You can use dynamite to dig large holes in the ground to store more water. Or you can make levees, which are these like wooden walls to build up and make large tanks of water. Or just make storages like these things right here, just conventional like water towers. And use those to stay alive during the times when there's a drought. Droughts usually just last a couple days during the lower difficulties on the hardest difficulty setting, which I'm currently playing on. They can last up to a month. The second type of disaster is called Bad Tide or Bad Water. And it just looks like a flood of Pepsi because nobody likes Pepsi. And that just tears through the map. And if it 
uh, reaches the area where your crops and stuff are, it basically poisons the land. So you want to have a way to redirect the river. And so like by default on this map, water comes from here, goes through this canal and it goes this way. However, if a bad tide comes, I slam shut these floodgates and then read open these over here and redirect it away from me. And usually on each map, if you look around, it's kind of a puzzle and you can find different ways to channel the water, the bad tide water to make it go somewhere else to go around you. And it does have uses. Uh, for example, I have some stored right here. You can use it to craft dynamite. You can also uh, put it into a centrifuge to make extract, which is used for various things. Everything in here is usable usable for something. But in this game, you know, the again, the enemies are basically drought and bad water. And how are you going to deal with those? And, you know, if you've ever run out of beavers, you lose and you restart. And that's basically it. But yeah, I, I have played about 50 hours of this so far. Yeah, 54 hours of this. And really really enjoyed this. Again, it's somewhere between Oxygen Not Included and like a full city sim because you do have these people and you can assign them to tasks and tell them like, hey, I need you to, you know, let's, you know, turn this pump back on. Really high priority. Get someone working in here and it'll grab someone from the population to come do that top priority. But at the same time, you don't really get attached to them because they constantly like, you know, make more beavers die, make more beavers die, stuff like that. But yeah, this is an early access game that I have tried recently and really, really gotten into. And I want to turn this up to high speed. I use usually play this on maximum speed. It's really dark right now because it's nighttime, so I'm just going to speed it up to get through that. But it's been very enjoyable. I've also seen some insane things people have built on YouTube and on their uh, their Discord because this game has a vertical building. So for example, uh, looking at what you got in front of me, see I can just keep stacking like this. So you can make like a spiral staircase that just goes all the way up to, you know, basically God. And you can just go all the way up there and make buildings and stuff uh, on top of each other. Any building that has a flat roof is labeled as a solid building and you can build another thing on top of it. So for example, like there's an inventor building over there. If for some reason I wanted to, I could build one on top of this, but then I could not build something on top of that. Timberborn is still in early access. Yes, it is still in early access. So it's been in early access for a while. And if you look at older videos on it, it has grown a lot. They've done a lot with it. This is just a game I'm kind of shouting out here because I have really enjoyed my time in it and maybe some of you will too and uh yeah so you know it's it's early access they still have time to completely bomb it <laughs> but i think they've done a very good job so far and i am a believer in the product as it currently is so i am shouting it out and just showing something i think is neat maybe you'll enjoy it too